Hey, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. I've got another 3030 load for you today, but it's something a little bit different. We're shooting Federal Premium with the 150 grain Barnes TSX bullet. And here is the box for that Federal Premium 3030 load. Let's flip it around. Here is the manufacturer literature, their promo information. Something I noticed, if you look right here, the velocity rating, at the muzzle it's rated at 2,220 feet per second for a 150 grain bullet. That is substantially slower than most ammo makers rate their 150 grain 3030 load. So that will be really interesting to see um, how close we come to that in a 20 inch barreled 3030 and that might have to do with the design of the bullet maybe they load it a little bit slower so the bullet will perform the way they want we'll see and there it is it shows the bullet nice and expanded pause and read that if you would like lead free of course so if you're in california or somewhere this might be a good option for you let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at some of these uh, bullets as per all federal ammo it comes in these plastic holders with the belt loops that nobody ever uses it has the blue lacquer sealed primers you can kind of see that one's got something on it who cares um pull one out take a look it looks like it's nickel plated brass most federal premium ammo is nickel plated brass and it has that just absolutely massive hollow point there in that barnes bullet i'm really excited to see how these perform and my test rifle today is going to be my 1980s vintage Glenfield Model 30A, basically a Marlin Model 336. It has a 20 inch barrel up top. I have a vintage Leopold M84X scope. And bringing up the rear, of course, I have one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. I've got the caliber stamped into it right there. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And let's come around to the other side. I want to show you, I've got my white tail deer design on this one. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Federal Premium 3030 with the 150 grain Barnes TSX load. And I did manage to capture one bullet. I tried to capture more bullets for y'all, but my rifle does not like this ammo. There was no consistency in point of impact. And at a certain point, I get pretty tired of going back and forth between here and my shooting position 100 yards back, resetting blocks and stuff. So at some point I had to call it. I think I fired about 15 rounds and only ever hit the blocks a few times. So we did capture one and it's right about, we can give it, I'll just give it 27 and a half inches. You could call it 28 if you want for where the front of the bullet is, but we'll call it 27 and a half. And another bullet that went in that I did manage to hit the block with veered over, went into the second block and then shot out the side right there at about the 23 inch mark. So I think it's safe to say that would have continued penetrating if it had stayed in the block. And let's take a look at the velocities for that Federal Premium 3030 load with the Barnes TSX bullet. Our high was 22.29, our low was 2182, and our average was 2206. That is incredible because the factory spec I think was 2220 and we are right there. And here's that Federal Premium 150 grain TSX bullet recovered from the gel. First we'll talk about weight retention. We had 100% retained weight. It still weighs 150 grains. No surprise there being it's a solid copper bullet. Let me go ahead and tip it up so we can take a look at that beautiful mushroom. So we'll talk about expansion. Our expanded diameter was 0.57 inches, which works out to 1.9x expansion. Pretty standard for a solid copper bullet. You don't tend to see the really explosive, you know, 2.4, 2.5 plus X expansion with solid copper bullets. Now on to velocity. Our high velocity was 22.29. Our low 
was 2182 and her average was 2206 versus the factory build velocity of 2220, which is interesting that um, Federal put the build velocity a bit lower than most 150 grain 3030 loads. I don't know, maybe they're optimizing it for the solid copper bullet. I have no idea. In either case, we came in just a hair slow, 14 feet per second slow on average, which is very, very surprising. Typically, our velocities come in substantially slower than what's built, but we're almost there and our actual our high velocity was higher than the factory build velocity so if you want accurate velocity on the box and out of your gun this ammo will probably do it and now on to penetration we saw 27 and a half inches of penetration really 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 good i'm really happy with that this thing's going to plow through just about anything you need it to all right y'all final thoughts on that federal premium ammo loaded with 150 grain tsx bullet out of the 3030 winchester no surprises as far as weight retention goes, 100% weight retention. That's kind of par for the course with solid copper bullets, especially Barnes bullets. They hold their weight together. Expansion-wise, 1.9x. That's a little bit less than I like to see, especially with 150 grand 30-30 load, but it's sort of par for the course for monolithic copper bullets. I've noticed that they tend to fold back a little bit more upon complete penetration, and you don't get that retained expansion like you do with some lead and copper bullets. I'm still really happy with it. We're right there close to that 2x mark that I like to see. And then velocity-wise, I thought this was really interesting. When you look at the box, Federal lists this ammo as having a substantially lower muzzle velocity than more standard 150 grain 3030 30 loads. Your standard lead and copper, like Remington Corelock Federal Power Shock, um, Winchester PowerPoint 150 grain 3030 30 load is billed at 2390 feet per second. This one is billed at 2220, so substantially slower and honestly a lot more realistic. But it makes me wonder, I wonder why Federal bills it at 2220 instead of a higher velocity. Are they just being more realistic? Are they using a more realistic test barrel length in the factory? Or is this bullet optimized to perform at a slightly lower velocity compared to other 3030 bullets? I don't know. It's really not a big deal. I just thought it would be interesting to talk about. And then penetration wise, and I wish I would have recovered more of these bullets for y'all. I only got the one. My rifle did not like this ammo. It does not shoot it very well at all. Extremely inaccurate. But we got one bullet, so that's what we're going to have to go with. Penetration wise, 27 and a half inches. Really, really deep. That is on par or slightly better than a lot of the 170 grain 3030 loads that I have tested. So what is this ammo good for? In my opinion, and this is just me, this is just me talking here, I would use this ammo, number one, if my rifle liked it, which mine doesn't, your, your mileage may vary, and I've noticed that a lot with solid copper monolithic bullets across calibers. The accuracy can, can be all over the place. Your rifle might love it, it might not. You're going to have to test yours to see, but what I would use it for if I was hunting somewhere that required a solid copper bullet. That's, that's really the only reason I would gravitate towards this particular load in the 3030 Winchester. If I was hunting in California, there's a lot of uh, national forests and national wildlife refuges that require non-toxic, you know, non non-lead bullets. Um, but that's what I would use it for, basically if the law required it. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.